Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's live stream. I uh, know we've been away for last week and everything like that, but we are back and we are ready. Uh, real quick, I actually forgot to post the uh, Instagram story to this thing, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that real quick as we're filming this. Um, let's see, copy link, and then I'm gonna say, uh, Hey everybody, we are live. I'm actually live right now. Uh, I'm doing this live right here with everybody on YouTube. So uh, go ahead, click the link right now. We are going to be creating a brand new image this week. I look forward to seeing you guys there. And there. Okay, one off. I did it all like in one go there. So uh, <laughs> let's, let's just post that real quick. And then we're going to go ahead and get started. For this week, we are actually going to be working on a brand new image, um, something a little more stylistic. I'm a little bit nervous about doing this particular image because there's a lot of detail in it and normally I like to try to keep my streams pretty simple uh, just to make it so that we can get it done within a week. But um, in this particular case, um, this is going to be a little more complicated because there's a lot of stuff going on here. So let me, let me go ahead and show that to you here and then we can go ahead and uh, get that going um this is the image which is like this really cool like kind of tim burtony feel uh animation scene and uh oh my audio isn't synced okay well we'll fix that let's see property uh out of 4k boom i don't know if that fixes my audio or not hello test 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 one two three let me know ben thanks for checking so it's a weird thing. This happens, uh, it didn't happen the first couple times, uh, my good. Um, this didn't happen the first couple times I, I did the whole streaming, but now it seems to happen almost once a, once a time. So I might have to just make it a ritual of mine to like reset the audio before each stream. Let's see. Uh, am I good? Yes, we are. We are ready to roll, guys. We are ready to roll. Um, okay. And as per usual, please hit that like button below um, as we're jumping into this. But as I was saying, this is going to be a fun kind of like Tim Burton-y um, weird, weird stuff. So, but today I'm going to do a little bit of sculpting. So I got myself a, my tablet and my pen um, and we're going to be working on this uh, here. I think the interesting stuff about this is uh, this curtain, I'm not quite exactly sure how I'm going to do that yet. Could be a bit of a cloth sim or something like that. I do want to sculpt this character because I've been practicing sculpting and it's been a lot of fun. Um, I've not never really done sculpting all that much in Blender before and uh, recently I've been getting really into it. But um, as usual, let's go ahead and start out by doing all the layout on everything and then I'm going to sculpt the blankets. Those will be sculpted with a texture thrown on top of it as well. Um, but yeah, this may be a multi-week stream, so we may finish this next week. I'm not quite sure yet. I'm just throwing that out there. This might not be something we finish today. There's just a lot of detail going on here. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into this. Um, and of course, as per usual, we're going to go ahead and start out by deleting that cube. We don't need that cube, guys. We, we are our own person. We can create our own cubes whenever we need it, okay? Um, the cool thing is on my tablet, I mapped my middle mouse button to the button right here. So I can actually control like the movement of this. It's pretty, pretty seamless. It's just, it takes a little bit of getting used to. So um, not quite sure how much I will be using the tablet versus my mouse, but uh, I guess we'll see going forward. Um, Let's go ahead and start out by creating ourselves a ground plane, something just for us to see what we're doing here. I'm probably just going to set our position here real quick. So grab Z. We're just going to always set this to a 3D cursor as well, just so that way we can set up the orientation of the camera a little bit better. But yeah. How was your guys' week? Um, did you guys have a busy week? Mine, I've been uh, not feeling well the first half of the weekend, so I was out of the office. But uh, overall, pretty productive, of course. <laughs> um, and right now, I am excited to go into the weekend. 
So let's go ahead and we're gonna start by also setting our end here to 100,000. And then I'm also gonna do that to the camera. We can change the um, end here as well. And then I also, um, earlier this week, finished, uh, which I know I'm, I'm behind the schedule, okay guys, I finished uh, House of the Dragon, the show, and not gonna lie, last two episodes saved the first season for me. So I'm excited to see where the next season goes and wh what they end up doing with that. Um, let's set this to individual origins as well. Perfect. Okay. For right now, I'm probably just going to hide that and then this way we can go in. What is it? Control space. Oh, I forgot that that was the, how that worked. I'm going to um, model this bed firstly, uh, just so we have something to look at. Scale that down. A little bit of a Tim Burton mood though, because um, I watched Beetlejuice last night for the first time. I had never seen it, uh, but very funny, very good film. Um, definitely can see why it's a classic. So I was like, today, you know what? I'm gonna have to do a Beetlejuice render. And here we are. Allows us to do something a little more stylistic too, which is always fun. I'll just go down on that and we'll just scale that up again. Last time for this bed frame. Perfect. I'm going to add an array. Just This makes it easier. So if I ever need to make an adjustment, I can just make it on one of them. And honestly, we don't see the other side, but for the sake of us just being creating a mo our own model, might as well create another array here and then adjust the Y for it to the other side. Because I guess the, um, this is going to go all the way up, this other corner of the bed. Um, yeah. But now any adjustments we make, we'll uh, make on all of them. Scale that down now. And finish off the top of this bed post. Probably gonna have to reset my um, I'm gonna have to reset the distance between each bed post. in and then finally a nice big scale out for this blob of the top Just uh, I 
And there we go. I like that. Shade that smooth, and there you go. You got yourself some bed posts. Probably going to adjust the uh, this distance just because they got moved a little bit by the scaling. And then finally we can and adjust that movement, but I really think that maybe the bigger problem is that the camera's orientation is just off. Like something like that, and then if we just move that over much better. Of course it's not going to line up perfectly because we did freehand models so it's going to be it's going to be different. Uh, let's say I'll set cursor selected. I'm just going to add a cube in and probably want to line this up here. better. I do create these images by the way, I don't know, um, I had someone message me and ask me where I got my source images. Um, I do actually get these of, by creating them myself. I make them in mid-journey. Um, oh, is my stream still going? My phone bugged out on me. Oh, there we go, yeah. <laughs> that was random. Um, but I do create these images on mid journey. Um, and then I, you know, Photoshop them up if I need to. Most of the time, they're actually pretty good straight out of mid journey um, for this work. And then, yeah, and then we recreate them in here. I like this method because it's like I'm doing all of my kind of concept art, if you will. Um, inside of Midjourney before I really want to finalize everything. Let's do that. I'm just gonna bring in the edges a little bit. Just give it a bit of a bevel. And because we are in, you know, like kind of more of this artistic looking world, I don't want the, ed I certainly don't want the edges to be perfect. So I do want to start to model in just a little bit of imperfections. It's one of the really nice things about doing like a, more of like that kind of like claymation style. If we just grab that, I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit so that way it has nice kind of just bow in it. If I shade that smooth now, it should work pretty nicely. And I'm going to texture this as well um, in a little bit, but let's just go ahead and get that there. Next up, we're gonna add in another cube right above everything else probably about that distance in. I'm just eyeballing it over here. Something like that. I'm going to change the face selection and then we'll just move that down. Again, just eyeballing it over here with our reference image that I created. So that way, um, we can get the proportions more so correct. Bring that over to the edge over here. And again, uh, probably just select everything and we could just bevel it quite a bit on this one um, since it's more of a mattress. And we'll just scale it up a little bit. We'll have some sheets on top so I'm not too worried about um, the detail here. We could shade that smooth. And again, We'll just add a little bit of, you know, just bring that up a little bit so that way it feels not so perfect. It is scaling actually from my um, 
my 3D cursor right now. Um, which is cool, actually, because it does make it so that, again, it's a little bit more skewed than I would have had it. An accidental, an accidental uh, uh, thing that actually worked out quite well. <laughs> but I think that, I think that works for the mattress. Um, well, let's tackle kind of the edges of this bed, this, of the bed frame. Can do that again. We're just going to add in a, another cube. See, guys, we add in our own cubes. We don't need a default cube. It's not necessary. We don't need that. Just scale that. Let's bring that over here. always so cognizant now of when I'm doing these streams um, that I don't swap my uh, screen layout terribly too much because it looks bad in the time lapse. And we all know that the real reason we do these live streams is for the time lapse. And the end of the day, that's the reason we do this. Let's grab this bottom face here. I'm just gonna grab that and move that up because we're gonna have this kind of flat portion um, that I want. And actually, here's what we'll also want. We will want to take this bottom face, we'll extrude it and we'll scale it in on the X axis and then extrude downwards. And that'll create kind of like this bottom lip that we we wanted. And if I take this, I can actually bevel the edges a bit. I probably should have done both those at the same time so they're the same. But again, the imperfections are what we want. So we'll bevel that up as well. And then I'm gonna grab this as well and then we'll just bevel the outside of it. Again, I'm gonna do each one individually. It'll just give it a little bit more of a natural kind of imperfection to it. Bevel that one quite a bit. And uh, before we add any bowing or anything like that, let's go ahead and just grab that. We'll uh, move it all the way to the other side of the frame. Oh wait, that's right. We have a style that we're doing here. Let's do half of it. I will set the origin and then we can mirror it. So just kind of extrude that outwards here. And again, extrude it. Extrude it. Just kind of rotating it. Not really looking at my reference image at this point. Just trying to create something that looks more natural from this angle. Just rotate that as well. Okay, and now once I have something like this, I'm gonna scale X zero, um, or scale Y zero is also. If I scale Y and then type zero, it actually flattens it out on the Y axis. I don't wanna scale it X zero. Uh, so we'll scale Y zero, that'll flatten that out. Next up, let's, uh, let's go back to this view over here and we're gonna want that to be halfway between these two posts. So uh, let's see, say about right there. I'm going to turn on the natural kind of just. And then if we turn on mirroring from here, do shift as cursor to selected. I'll set object, set origin to 3D cursor, and then we will turn on mirror. Where's that at again? There it is. And not on the X, but on the Y. We almost got it. Uh, 
That might work. Cursor to 3D objects. And then object set origin to 3D cursor. Perfect. Now, that kind of creates that more so perfect uh, outline of the object. The other thing I want to do is we'll add in a subdivide surface just to smooth out everything a little bit more. And then I'm going to hit shade smooth. Uh, I do need to select it. Whoops, I need to change that. There we go. Shade smooth. And then I'm going to add another loop cut that's going to go all the way to the edge. And then the only other thing is if we select all of these vertices, we can just move that inside of our of our uh, bed leg. Okay. I'm going to create an array. And we will move that all the way to the other side of the bed here. I do think this one should be higher up. So let's uh, let's go ahead. And we can use the array to kind of like reposition it. <laughs> Perfect. And now we can do the legs of the bed. I'm going to create one, and then we can duplicate that leg. Rather than using an array, because then I can create some imperfections between each leg. So let's go ahead and select the bed here. That's fine over here. I'm going to set the uh, cursor over here. I don't want this to go into the legs. So if I scale it by 3D cursor, I can make shorten it on this end of the bed. Let's do that. We're gonna be adding a new cube in here. It's either a cube or probably a cylinder. Ooh, this song's popping. Let's scale that up. I'm going to use a medium point. On the bottom kind of edge of this I need to select this whole thing and kind of have it go flush with the outside edge of the bed or at least the middle kind of like that now I can have these guys come up from the middle section. I'm going to select this top face here. Probably don't want. We'll just create our own design now. Feel free to have a little bit of fun with this. I mean, it's just... And, uh... Probably not doing that great of a job here. <laughs> Scale that down, kind of just break it up a little bit. Something like that, and then.
probably kind of go a little bit larger again and then this might be a little too creative of a task for me guys okay great now you've got that post in there probably for right now you could just do a few of those I'll just lessen the distance slightly Now if I apply that, I'm going to go into edit mode now, just grab this and again turn on. Just kind of stretch these upwards. grabbing them on this side which is actually going to create a bit of a um, imperfection on the other side as it's getting stretched and then I'm just going to grab these and then kind of just do a little bit of finagling as well to make them a little more crooked go kind of works um, let's have this whole bed let's have it kind of go out a little bit so that way we can line these up with the center of that pole okay great and again we'll add in another mirror Oh, not a mirror, sorry. A uh, array. I'm just gonna have that go to the absolute opposite side. And that, yep, that goes up the center. But you'll notice that uh, the ground isn't matching up, which is fine. We can stretch that out a little bit. And then we're going to stretch the tops of these. Now I'm going to apply my array again. And we'll just grab all tops of this here and There we go. Gonna kind of not screw with the other side too much, but uh, just create a little bit more randomness vertically here. kind of solid view that we have. Okay, awesome. Let's uh, start working on some of the furniture around this guy. Let's add in another cube, I guess. the edges here okay. 
kind of just like getting a primitive to line everything up initially and then that allows me to really start to add the detail in. But now that we have all of that, let's do extrude scales uh, alt s or sh there's a way to like extrude it I guess I could do each one individually I was gonna do each one kind of like at the same time There's your kind of drawer. I'm going to probably create the lip to this as well. I can actually just do with a few of these. I'm probably just do that. And then if we select this face, or this edge, I should say, let's go ahead and move that in. That'll create a bit of our drawer edge. And then finally, this drawer edge here as well. I'm only trying to select that. Let's go ahead and move this in. I suppose actually we probably have to create this side of the lip as well as this side because we don't want that to go in but if I select all of those just wanna I don't wanna, I don't wanna scale everything in I just wanna move this edge in if I grab that now and move that in that'll create ourselves the lip of the this drawer Okay, great. Um, my recommendation actually would be to just delete everything here that's down there. And then that way we only have kind of like this top portion here. And actually probably leave that open. If I then do an array downwards, I can actually just duplicate this three times to have our three drawers. to move that up and then let's apply it I'm only gonna select this bottom ring now and that should give us our dresser on the side pretty easy way to create a dresser on the fly create some handles for this as well momentarily but I'm just going to now let's say before we create that bottom piece um, the cool thing about it is since it is procedural let's see let's keep the array on there let's duplicate it we'll just move it over here -X. these are gonna have different bottoms but Technically speaking, it's just the same drawers. So we'll just duplicate that one more time. And then this guy over here, we can apply that. And then I only want this bottom ring again. So let's just move that down. 
I think that works. This is going to have a different bottom and a different top. So we'll go ahead and apply all of that. And I think if I select everything here, we'll just add a cursor selected on that. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this top piece. I just want to extrude that upwards. Just adding in another beveled edge. Focus on that, just so that way it's a little easier to move around. Of course, while I'm thinking about it, uh, make sure to hit that like button as you guys are watching. Um, definitely helps it, uh, helps me out, so I appreciate that. Um, but uh, yeah, we're just getting all this furniture added in, and then. We'll get to the characters here momentarily as well as the cloth. Hello, hello, oh, weird nations. Thanks for joining the stream. Uh, we're just creating this image that I have over here. Um, we're going to be recreating it. So I've just started out. Uh, we created the, the bed here as well as starting on the furniture. Then we'll get to some of the stuff on the top. Yes, Blender, man. Blender users here. Blender users only. Okay, we accept everyone. But, you know. You know how it is. Scale that up and we'll create this top lip as well. Okay, and that'll be the top of that dresser piece over here. Now we can kind of focus on making some of these handles. Which might the easiest way might be just to duplicate that down. I'm going to extrude these out. Scale that on the y-axis here. Kind of just focus on that. There we go. We'll extrude this, scale it inwards. Just go up with our lip now. That'll create nice, easy. This isn't the same as the photo, but it's just an easy kind of thing. I'm going to just make it its own object and let's see oh I guess not positive three it'll be downwards about that much and again we can just take this and we can duplicate it to the other side say like control MX oh no Control M. Hello, there we go. Move that all the way over here. Okay, didn't quite line that up correctly. Think. Let's do it on the top piece here. And then we'll add one more as well. And then, let's see. I may still be off on the camera because it's supposed to be a wider lens. So let's just go ahead and just manually do this. Um, set it to like 25. And then reset the kind of angle here. I 
I think I'm happy with it being slightly different. We can always play with this later once we get into the shading section. Oh, let's just set the cursor here. I have to make a new leg. Probably just take this leg. Let's duplicate that. Just make it easier on myself. Get rid of my arrays. And we'll just move that over. I could scale it down too. Just kind of line it up with the corner of this guy. Oh, did I not? I guess technically no. We'll just scale that down quite a bit so that way. I think I do like it being all the way down that far. So that way then everything just kind of moves up. Yeah, I think that works for me. For right now, let's go ahead and just flow with that and we can adjust it later, of course. Add our arrays back in. I do almost wish that it wouldn't default uh, the one on the x-axis, just because sometimes or most of the time, I, I either want more than one or I want it to be on a different axis. Uh, sometimes I turn auto smoothing on. Um, it depends, like this does have auto smoothing on, this one does not. Um, most of the time I do turn it on in the end anyways. But for right now, I, I do not have them on. Let's go ahead and select everything here. Kind of move this over, kind of line it up a little bit. Our, we're definitely getting away from what the a reference photo is at this point. I have to adjust some of the stuff because I was doing it to the wrong focal length. these do have legs as well I'm not gonna have legs on mine hey yo Vrono how's it going welcome 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 we're just biting off more than we could chew today that's all we're doing Nothing weird, of course. Nothing different than normal. Just more than we could chew. I think if we move this all the way to the edge here, actually, I, we'll, do, we'll do this corner because the roof or the wall kind of goes up and then it, it kind of disappears. Attach that over and I think if we extrude this inwards towards the y-axis should be able, everything could kind of kind of line up all right we'll scale that upwards just create our funky walls and it's like uh, so weirdly Tim Burton man oh whoops <laughs> I, I made that not correct. There we go, okay. We'll scale that upwards as well. And then grab those on the X axis, bring those in as well. This really should be up against the wall. So I'm gonna line that up just so that way I'm not gonna have any weird shadow issues later. This needs, just needs to be skinnier. And 
then we can uh, bring that down. It's weird because the floor just goes so much lower. It's because my camera perspective is off, and I. This is why I should be using F Spy and not just eyeballing it every single time we do this. Um, but it's okay. Live in the moment. I'm gonna bring this in as well. I'm just gonna kind of go with this, and um, as far as the moon goes, I don't really care all that much uh, about that right now. Let's just let's just focus on the interior design of this room. We have a window that we have to make, and then uh, go from there. Let's just create this bottom ledge and these side pieces as well. And then I guess the it has it to a certain extent. Such a weird design. I think it's just completely invisible. It like fades out basically. I'm gonna have mine go to this point right here and then we can just delete these vertices. And then if we select this face here and then delete only the face, and then select this and we say only the edge, that's gonna create our kind of window that we have. Um, let's create the other side of this. And we can bevel all of this outwards. Just create kind of a bit of a lip. It goes around. Select all of that. Just extrude outwards a little bit, not too much. And then of course, I'm going to bevel my edges here. Perfect. And then as always, uh, we'll create the inside of this wall, but not extrude everything. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll extrude that at, on our Y axis. And then finally, I'll just extrude one more time and we'll just scale it out. I'm gonna move it down just so we don't see it over the edge there. Uh, but that'll create kind of that ledge on our wall. And then we can tackle kind of like the curtains falling over the edge and stuff like that here in a bit. But I did want to do the blankets on this uh, this bed first, and then that way, that kind of works uh, for us. Um, let's see. We do the the do start adding in items and like things like that a little bit later. What do you guys think though? Does it feel Tim Burton enough? I don't know. It's hard to tell with grayscale until it's like hard to tell until it's too late, and then you're like, "Well, that looks like shit." So, uh, but you know, slowly but surely, we will, we will get it done. Oh, you guys are so nice, saying hi to each other in the chat. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go ahead and add the rug in also real quick. I could do that. Just scale that. And again, we could do this by with like a solidify modifier. That way I don't really have to add the 3Dism to it myself. But let's go ahead and just, oopsies. Uh, we will add our thickness there. Kind of thinking, let's see. We add in some loop edges. Scale that outwards a little bit. I'm going to kind of like follow this um, this edge a little bit. And I can just extrude outwards as I'm going. I just like this uh, the, the way it naturally falls on the ground over here. So I just want to follow that since it's a really good reference. I'm only doing the left side right now. I just realized the right side is way off. So I will I will work on that. Um, 
Well, thank you so much, Weird Animations. We or is it Weird Animations? Gotcha. Weird Animations. So, how long have you been using uh, the blenders? Because you did say you were a fellow blender user, which makes me assume that you're a blender user. Might not be the case though. I have been using it uh, since like Blender version. Oh, it was in the ones um, back when they had the game engine attached to it. Um, I know it doesn't look like I've been using it for that long, but that's how long I've been using it. And let's see, oopsies, I'm gonna scale that upwards. Three years, awesome. Yeah, I actually got into 3D aspect of design and stuff like that because um, I really wanted to do game design. That was what really interested me. So, it's kind of my first love and then went from there. Kind of set this here. Let's move this a little bit over and then farther away. There we go. The render engine certainly has gotten much better. I remember when I first was learning how to do uh, render engine work, um, it was a bit of a nightmare. I, I didn't use cycles. I didn't know how to use nodes or anything like that. Um, so I was using Blender's internal render engine. I don't know if you guys remember that or not, but it was a completely different day and age of uh, craziness. <laughs> um, certainly wasn't that great. First used in 2019 when I used, um, okay. Oh, I feel like Blender was like that 3D software that was like free. So if you ever had to convert any like 3D objects, like I think is a uh, Minimator, I don't know exactly if that's what I'm thinking of, but there was this, um, there was this 3D thing, I played Minecraft back in like 2012, 2013 timeframe. And um, there was this software that would convert Minecraft builds into a 3D op object file that you can open up and you can like fly around in it and like Blender and stuff like that. And that was always like one of the coolest things that you could do. Um, let's see, I'm gonna add in some, some pillows. Wait, are there pillows actually in this photo? Uh, there is no pillow. I'm gonna add a pillow. I'm going to add a pillow to this scene because who doesn't have a pillow on their bed? But yeah, Minecraft back in the day, man. Whew, that was the thing. Rotate that now before we go into here. And then if we go, just scale that up a little bit. Again, just kind of giving it some life. I'm gonna select everything though, and we'll just bevel it all in quite a bit. Pretty, pretty low poly, I think. I'm just gonna grab pieces of it and then just using this tool just kind of like stretch it up a little bit and create a little more formation to everything if I use a solidifier modifier oh, sorry subdivide sub 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 subdivide modifier It'll allow me to do that. And there we go, we'll shade it smooth and just flatten everything out a little bit more. Okay, serious question. Lo-fi music or loud electronic music to animate to? Uh, good question. It kind of depends. For me, 
um, I listen to whatever the theme is of like the project that I'm working on. So uh, I work on a lot of feature films. And if I'm working on, let's say, a Christmas movie and it's July, it means I'm probably going to be listening to Christmas music in my office. Um, so it, it all kind of depends. But then you get like bored of certain music. So then you're like, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to not listen to that kind of theme music. And then I'm not a huge fan of lo-fi personally, um, just because it plays the same song over and over and over again. And it's like at first, the first like, let's say 30 minutes of you listening to the music, it's pretty cool. Like, uh, you know, chill vibes, pretty awesome. But then after that, I do feel like it, I do feel like it, it just kind of gets old. And maybe it's because I forget that I'm listening to the music at all. And then I will all of a sudden realize that I've been listening to the same like beat for the last 30 minutes. And I think that's my problem with it. But uh, how about you? What is your preferred music of choice? Let's see, and just... I take everything now. Gotta try to be careful. I don't want uh, it to feel too boxy, but if I take a decimate and then we decimate it, but I decimate it before the subdivision. Uh, let's see what that does for us. Yeah, that kind of smooths everything out. So it kind of depends on what we want to do. I can first smooth everything out and then have that there. Okay. bit so it's just a little more squished just trying to remove kind of like this edge over here and I could probably do that in sculpting as well so I'm not gonna spend terribly too much time trying to get that pillow to look like a pillowy pillow louder uh, like electronic rush soundtrack music okay I also here's the other thing it kind of depends lately I've been listening to a lot of music just directly on YouTube like I'll just find some YouTube playlists and then I'll just play that music um, and I've been a huge fan of that I'm gonna apply all these by the way as well just helps the render engine render faster because otherwise it has to process every modifier every frame and that's just more annoying to work with especially since I'm gonna probably be throwing in volumetrics as well but yeah lately I've just been because I don't know I'm not a Spotify dude and uh, there, I've just, it's the same music all the time and it just drives me crazy. Um, so lately I've been kind of listening to more and more like YouTube playlists that people put together and I've been really enjoying that. I'm gonna kind of just Add in a little bit more so that way it has still has the rounded edges. I'm not pushing these all the way to the end, but I am putting them pretty close because I don't want. I think that works for me. It still gives me kind of like that rounded edge here. Now I could shade that smooth. And there we go. That's the carpet on the floor. Um, we might add some like little frills or something like that off the carpet. I'm always a fan of um, and of course we will be doing quite a bit of texture work on top of everything I think today I'm, I don't know I guess we'll see how I'm feeling here but um, this is a pretty complicated render so I may make this part one part two type of situation so hey if you guys aren't subscribed make sure to hit that subscribe button because uh, I do these live streams once a week every Friday um, and next week we're we'll doing another stream hopefully a brand new image but I guess it all kind of depends on if I, I finish this today or not 
Uh, for this um, blanket situation, I'm thinking the easiest step is let's do a actual cloth sim. And from here, we can, uh, we'll do like an actual cloth sim. And then I can do an actual kind of like sculpting on top of it. Uh, wrinkle brush sculpt mode. I haven't screwed around with the wrinkle brush too much. I, what I did last time I tried to do cloth, I did regular sculpting. And then after that, I, oh, I, well, I did a cloth sim and then I did a regular sculpting, which is the, kind of like the method in which I'm going to do right now. So I'll like get the initial shape kind of down, which in this particular case is like, a, let's just see, just bunch up the sheets a little bit. And then I'll do like two blankets, but basically what I did last time was let's do cloth. Well, actually, I guess we'll just need that to be a collision. This needs to be a collision. This needs to be a collision. Collision and collision. And then this guy can be a cloth. Don't we have presets in here for different types? cloth types or whatever. I feel like I remember there being presets. Let's do shape or collisions and we'll do self collision. Will this work. It does, but it looks like it looks ugly. Let's move that over. Oh, I guess this needs to have way more friction on it too. And then let's see. We'll subdivide all of that. And then let's see. Close. Let's see, let's try this. I do really want it to bunch up more. And <sighs> that's good. I also feel like it's just too, th it feels thick, right? Does it not? I don't feel like it's just. It might be the best we get, honestly, for the initial sim. And then if I just take that and apply it. We'll try the wrinkle brush. I'm going to try that. Let's go to sculpt mode. Let's see, where is the wrinkle brush? Is it the cloth brush down here? Um, I've only seen like online videos of people using it. I'm assuming it's this cloth brush. Oh Jesus. Is it like you get to just shake it up or how does that, uh, maybe do I need to add more vertices in here? We can add a multi resolution of our C in here. Let's do that real quick. Let's do multi res. Multi resolution. Also, for my sanity, let's go to. Uh, let's do random. And we'll hit the subdivide button. Ooh. Oh my god. Dude, you just shake it. Holy crap. <laughs> oh, shrink it down. Okay, I. Okay. 
it's like you're you're adding uh, I'm probably gonna have to buff up some of this so that way it's not colliding into the uh, the ground so much oh and then you just kind of crunch it up and as you're crunching it it wrinkles it does the wrinkle thing Wow, that's a cool little, I did this manually last time. I'm gonna buff it out momentarily. I'm just kind of like grabbing it first. I love these small wrinkles it throws in there. That's amazing. I'll use like the grab tool as well. Let's see, grab it, pull it. Could also use probably the buff tool. I'm gonna subdivide that one more time. Let's use the buff tool actually. Uh, I think also what is it's not the, the it's not gonna be the grab tool. Maybe I'm thinking of a tool that's inside of, um, it's inside of like the particle edit mode, which is kind of like just the fluffy, fluffiness tool. I guess I could inflate it. Let's just give some more puff. And then I can uh, use that, use the cloth tool again. Holy crap, that was a good suggestion. Thank you so much for that suggestion. You're right, I could shrink it down, but I'm just gonna try to get like the big movements there first. And then, I might add like another blanket or, this has like that kind of, um, I just realized this photo kind of looks like that, like from that movie BG, where like the girl is like looking out the window and there's like a huge troll monster there. I'm gonna use the inflate tool again, just to pop that up. Sweet, okay. I'm going to, um, now of course it looks like that because I have in this mode, uh, just, you just don't see the multi-resolution, but I'm going to use the solidify here first before I do anything else. Um, should work. If I do view it, should be fine. That does clip, so I might want to adjust that. Go to sculpt mode and we can just use the elastic tool, I think. The elastic grab tool. I'm just trying to grab you. There we go. It's a little floaty there. I think I'm fine for this particular image. Probably be fine. Um, hit that save button. This is the reminder to hit that save button, everybody. Just realized my face looks really green because this light of the green is like reflecting onto my face. So maybe that's not the uh, the best option. Of course, because you know the most important thing in the world is whether or not I look good in the uh, in the photo in the video. Let's see, 
I'm going to uh, create some photos on the wall now, I think. Just for sake of this, uh, let's go ahead and just do it but via plane. Y axis. Turn that off as well. Let's kind of just extrude everything outwards here and uh, see. Let's create a let's create a framey frame. Uh, drag that in a bit actually now we can actually just put pictures in that frame um, so divide surface that whoa now we got a circular picture frame um, not exactly what we wanted let's see do control R here just have that go all the way up Control R Now if I shade smooth that, that'll give us a nice looking frame. Welcome back, welcome back. Um, and then let's see, let's grab this face here and if we just extrude it, I think I'm just not a fan of, um, let's do that again here. Sweet. That creates a little bit more of a sharp edge. Ah, uh, let's see. I want now this face here, only the face to be deleted. I might have to do that a few times because I did. Oh no, that should be good there. And now if I apply that. Oh, I think I screwed up with the uh, loop cut edges there. Yeah, let's just keep that subdivide surface off for right now. We can maybe worry about that later. Um, but let's go ahead and just duplicate this and we're just gonna move it over to the other side of our room. Control MX. And uh, grab that. Put that pretty close to the wall. Have you tested out the new version of Blender yet? Because um, I have personally not gotten a chance to do that, but I've been meaning to. I hear that there are some great new uh, features, at least with Eevee, which I don't use terribly often if I'm being completely honest. Um, I tend to do things more in cycles anyways. Scale that up just so we could get a little bit more of a 3D frame there. We're gonna do the same thing over on this side. Yeah, I think this, yeah, this is version 3.4. I have a hard time updating my versions of Blender primarily because um, plugins don't automatically get updated. I use Nuke as well, and every time I update the version of Nuke, I get all my plugins just automatically transport over. But Blender doesn't seem to do that. I don't know if maybe that's some kind of setting thing that I have to adjust for, but it's one of the annoying enough things about Blender that just makes me want to stay on old versions. Um, actually, rather than deleting that, we'll just move that over here for right now. 
I tend to stay on old versions of Blender and uh, then upgrade like maybe twice a year. I, I it's it's hard. Like I stayed on 2.8 for a while until 3.2 came out. I think that was the stable version of Blender for that. But that's it's just one of those things where um, it's difficult. You don't know how to do it properly. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, and as I said, maybe I'm not doing it right because I feel like there should be a more automated way of updating your Blender that, because every other software I use, if I use like Houdini or something like that, it does have like more of like a client, um, like a install client. Like if you're using Unreal Engine, for instance, that'll have like a, a client that you're working with. Let's do this and we'll just... And create a stepped upwards. Turn that on. I'm thinking. Scale that down. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's extrude that. Whoops. Scale that inward. Um, and create. I'm just gonna move that up slightly as well. No reason to have perfect. Uh, how do I do this? Just for the base of this, like light, essentially. If I go to. Delete only faces. I'm going to select this as well. I'm just gonna move that down. Scale that upwards. I do feel like that's just kind of off. I'm gonna have this on its own thing because I do want to add like a subdivide surface on it. Let's select kind of like this rounded edge here. Um, you do feel like you're really improving on materials. Yeah, I think it's one of those things um, that I've recently been trying to practice a lot more on. Um, and I've been having a lot more fun with it because if, as soon as you start to think of it from like a compositor's like mindset, I feel like creating shaders and like procedural shaders is, is a lot of fun. Um, I think it, for me anyways, just because I, as I said, I was using old, old Blender. I was always afraid to use cycles because I didn't know how to create whatever I wanted. And then as soon as you kind of like start to learn how different things work um, inside of the system, it, it becomes a lot more fun to do. I'm gonna edge loop that upwards, and then we'll shape that smooth. Yeah, we're gonna create kind of like a bottom lip here, so do that. It's certainly one of those things where you do have to experiment. And that's why I like doing these like uh, 3D uh, kind of like live streams that I do every week because they do get to practice a lot more on a bunch of different types of techniques and experiment with new things. Uh, for this sake of this stream. Oh yeah, I did, um, well, I guess it depends on what laptop you have, but there are also ways to be able to really cut down on the render times. Um, 
But Eevee is certainly the best if you're using a laptop. I would definitely agree with that. Let's see, that's fine. I'm probably gonna throw some that, that like plant-like thing up here as well. Um, I don't know what that is, but we're gonna create one ourselves. I'm using botanic or botanic. Um, let's see, plants. Let me do something. Yeah, potted plants. Can I do that? Accessories, probably. Or miscellaneous. No, we don't want shrooms. This is a kid's bedroom. Garden. Pots. Oh, so we could do a pot separately from the actual. That's probably best, anyways. Let's do this guy. It's probably too big. Oh no, he's fine. Then if we spawn one of our plants that I had. I'll do another plant as well, as if it's like a thriving pot of plants. What kind of plants does a kid have in his bedroom? If I had plants in my bedroom, even as an adult, I, I they would die, so. Scale all that up. I think this will be kind of cool because it might cast like some cool shadows on the wall. Let's scale that up as well. Kind of put that in. Hit the save button, everybody. Also hit the like button. Uh, you know, or subscribe. One of the two. I mean, you take your pick. I, I don't have a preference which one you hit. But if you did hit one of them, that'd be awesome. Um, let's see. That's cool. There. I. You know. If we tackle this curtain thing, this might be fun, or it could be a nightmare, one of the two. It's probably going to be both at the same time, um, but it's okay because it's, you know, Halloween time, so it's supposed to be scary, right? It's supposed to be a scary kind of uh, endeavor, um, but uh, let's do that. I, I See, I don't even know. Is this going to be like a cloth sim situation, or... You know what I could do? Let's um, let's first go by adding in a plane. That's the first thing we're gonna do, guys. And if I delete the outside vertices here, let's kind of do that. And uh, let's grab that upwards. You've done all three. What did I, what did I say? I don't even remember what I said. I hope it was smart. gonna extrude everything outwards and let's see we're gonna do this I'm just gonna kind of add in oh whoops oh jamming music here Now, what I'm gonna want is every other, we delete the vertices. Kind of create these like strip-like things. If 
this doesn't work, I have an idea with like a hair particle system. So, um, let's do that. And let's go ahead and select this entire top ring up here. No, I already know this isn't gonna work. <laughs> I just, I kinda wanna do it. Um, I guess maybe I wanna do it in conjunction with everything else, but let's see, let's go uh, to our vertex groups. We're gonna add a new group in here and we'll just call it pin, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to assign that to this group here. And if I go in and let's see, we add in some cloth. Go back to our frame zero. under shape our pin group and then finally see we will do a force field so how you guys know that I didn't practice any of this crap before I started this stream is that I am trying out a random ass endeavor let's change the strength on this And before our cloth simulation, throw a subdivide surface on here. So we have a little bit more vertices to work with. I do think instead of it being turbulence, let's try not a vortex. Not a wind, because I don't want it to go in like any specific direction. I want it to go outwards. So we have drag, I could do, n no not drag, I don't want drag. I almost want magnetic, where's magnetic? Here we go. I want this to be negative 50. I don't think magnetic's doing what I want it to do. <laughs> I don't know. I don't also think that you're supposed to use it in the sense of like pulling things aw away from each other. But I figured I would try it. So funny because it literally doesn't do what I want it to do. Uh, okay, I'm going to work on a project. Might not chat as much, but I'll be here. Well, thank you so much for uh, for hanging out for the time that you did. Let's go ahead and delete this at the top here. I'm going to do my hair particle method because uh, that'll work. I know it will. I'm gonna scale that down on the Y axis and uh, if I grab this now, just stretch this all the way across. Um, oh, wait a second. Let's move that about right here. Let's add in our particle system, hair specifically, and let's rotate that on the x-axis 180 degrees. Grab that, we'll move it down. Change this to something like 20, just so we can see what we're doing here. Uh, I'm gonna change the length of the hair particles. Let's see. I know where this is at on Eevee. So let's do that here first. Let's change our curves to strip. Change that back to cycles. And let's go to our hair shape. I'm gonna change this to five, five, five. Probably five is too big. Maybe one is fine. One is still too big. Point two, point two, point two. This might actually work like that. Uh, let's see. Change the hair length here a little bit longer. Okay, 
Okay, great. Now if I change the number of this, something a little bit more, this might work. Let's go into our, change the segments as well. I'm gonna go into particle edit now. And we're just gonna kind of model this to be what we need it to be. Change the scale of this as well. I'll use the snake hook uh, uh, ability here momentarily. Kind of just do that. Got an object mode here. I think uh, I do need to add more detail to the curve. Curve subdivision. How do I get it to be more uh, detailed? Let's see, vertex groups, textures, doo -doo doom. I know there's a setting here to like add more like subdivisions to each thing, which I thought was the segments, but maybe not. fine because we can smooth it out here uh, once I'm done with the particle system I just wanted I just wanted it to be as close as it could have been here okay let's get some like really long ones too the oh I'm in an older version of blender damn it it's fine we can make this work the effect that I really wanted was the new snake hook kind of like hair uh, tool find it very useful. Let's do that and then let's do the length on this one. Swap to object mode. Let's enable some simple hair. Probably gonna cut some of these though, because it's just like I have too many. Okay, not a huge fan of how that turned out. Um, let's convert it to a mesh first before I complain too much. Um, That'll kind of give us like our bit of our curtain effect that I wanted. If 
I grab this though, maybe, let's do this. Let's grab this and then scale that upwards. Kind of create a little bit more of a droop over here. Okay, that might work. That's a bit of a weird way, honestly, of coming up with like curtains. Um, I don't know. It. I'm not necessarily angry about it, but uh, probably wouldn't recommend it. I mean, I guess it gets this particular effect that we're going for. Let's see, let's look at that with two. Kind of this like weird droopy, I don't even know effect. Let's scale that up also. Do want it to have that silhouette though, so I might bring in. that and then let's just move that over as well okay it's coming along guys it's coming along at least the grayscale model version of it is Let's see. Just added a USB sphere all the way back here. Oh, thank you so much. I guess I missed your comment. I'll see you at the next stream, I guess. Um, I'm so focused on this, man. Uh, let's see. Let's grab that. I'm going to bring that all in. Don't, I don't want it to interact with that wall at all, so I'm kind of just selecting everything here, and then we're just pulling it all. That should work just fine. Hit the save button there. You know, strangely it works. It does have that weird, like, drippy kind of feel to it. I have to do some compositing, of course, and all that, so I'm not too worried. But uh, it, it has like that kind of like strange ethereal feel to it. Um, yeah, the walls don't go up, but it does look strange that they don't go up. Or does it look strange? I think I want this wall to go up. And that would be much better. Yeah. That works for me. And now let's let's tackle the kid. 
the kid. Somewhere around there. We're gonna want a sphere. It's just a sphere, guys. Let's see. Can I go into sculpt mode here? Probably, let's see. Just give him a bit of a neck. I'll do shoulders as well here momentarily, but I'm gonna do a multi-resolution on this guy. Subdivide, subdivide. Probably just grab that little bit down. Kind of give him a little bit of a neck there, and then um, I'll go in and add some shoulders. Let's add another UV sphere here. Add another multi resolution. Let's just subdivide once. Do you want for symmetry's sake? Let's see on the x axis. <laughs> He's not that fat, guys. So we'll just bring and then kind of shape up his, his torso a little bit. just wearing kind of like a honestly a bit of a long kind of like nightgown let's do that we'll do a, like an elastic grab here just stretch out that nightgown aspect of it. I just give him some arms as well.
Oopsies. Kind of just bring that up. Let's see. Smooth that out a little bit as well. smooth this out. We'll add some wrinkles in and everything here momentarily. Which I guess we can use the cloth thing for. Show our three prong of that, and then I hit shade smooth. I like that. I'm gonna make his shoulders a little bit sharper, and uh, that way. Oh, not the cloth. I don't want that. I want the grab tool. You do that, and then I, I, I like the, the crease ability on. So let's go into object mode here. Let's uh, move that up. The front just really doesn't look correct. I'm not too worried about it because I don't want to see the front. Just mostly don't want him to feel too boxy as well. Then we'll add an ear. Again, really just figuring out the silhouette here as we're going along. For the sake of this, I'm going to just make his legs with a cylinder. Grab the top of that, move that up, go solidify. All right, there we go. Um, let's fix his arms as well here. Go back into sculpt mode. And then I'll just, uh, after sharpening that up, We'll, we will be modeling our own hands, but I'm just going to add some cloth in for the this bit here. I'll go to object mode there, and voila, that's the backside of water. No, I'm just kidding. Um, that's the backside of this character. Honestly, looks a little too much like a butt for me, and I'm not about that. Let's do elastic grab here, and then we'll just bring that in. 
I'm going to turn off the symmetry as well for the cloth, the rest of this cloth here, because I don't want uh, both sides to look exactly alike. And then let's use the uh, inflate tool, but I'm going to use the minus button for the bottom here. And this is for shad shading purposes because I do think you're going to see this. Create that edge a little bit. Oh, you know what I need to do? Oh, let's see, blob. That's gonna be, that's gonna work better, okay. Only capturing the front here. Trying not to affect the back at all, so. That'll create more of like a, a thin wall shadow. There we go, perfect. Um, then the only other thing is to create a crease on this bottom part. Do also think maybe like an elastic grab work. There we go. I'm going to work a little bit on the main character for this. Let's go ahead and save button there. Um, let's create an ear. I have found at least the best way to do this is just with like a draw. I'm going to turn back mirror on. Um, it's kind of just like output an ear like at least a section. And then um, using the grab tool, let's go ahead and subdivide this also. Let's kind of just flatten this out. And I am by no means a professional at uh, sculpting, so there's probably a, a much better solution to doing this than what I'm doing. But I found this just gives me like a really nice quick result. I do think also this whole ear should be a little bit lower on the face. So I'm going to bring it down. Make sure his jowls don't become too jowly. not worried too much about the front of the face, so I'm not going to poke around too much with it. I'll give him a bit of a chin just in case you do see that from the other side. And then I'm going to smooth this out generally as well. Create a little bit of shape on the back of the head. And then finally, I feel like there's a turn. Yeah, it's the rotate. Whoopsies. Maybe that's not what I want. I do just want to grab the ear and just rotate it. We don't really care what the inside of the ear looks like. Let's be 
do that like that. Shape smooth it. And then we'll do some hair as well. It's all coming along. Um, been really bad about my management of objects today. Okay, I'm going to actually probably for today, because this is going to be a two-parter, and I kind of knew it going into it, I think I'm going to pause here. Um, this is, you know, what we've created so far, and uh, we're going to continue and pick this up next week, finish up some modeling, uh, do all the shading and some compositing work on it. But we got a good amount done today. Um, it's just a pretty detailed piece, so... I, I wanted to have this be more of like a two week shot. Um, that way we can make it look really awesome, and really nice. Um, but yeah, this is what we created so far. So if you guys liked it, please hit that like button below. Um, and then make sure to subscribe so that way next week at uh, 5.30 p.m. next Friday, um, you guys can join and uh, we can continue this working on this shot and uh, we'll create something truly magical, truly haunting because uh next week is almost like halloween time so um that'll be fun but anyways thank you guys so much for watching today really appreciate it and again i uh, will see you guys next week all right peace out